Hey guys, I recently ran into some trouble trying to tram my mill using this magnetic base dial indicator holder. I've never liked tramming my mill using this because there's not really a good flat spot on the bottom side of the mill to attach the magnetic base, but also because of these two spring-loaded features on the forearm. I always thought they were kind of hokey, but in the last couple of months they've become so sloppy that the indicator holder is totally useless. I thought a better idea might be to have a spindle mounted dial indicator holder, so that's what I'm going to make using this piece of 3 quarter inch cold rolled 1018. This stuff comes about 50 thousandths undersized, which I thought was going to be a problem, but it actually fit my Tormach 3 quarter inch R8 collet perfectly, so I didn't have to do any polishing or machining or, or anything. Apparently cold rolled still always comes a bit undersized and hot rolled a bit oversized, at least that's what the guy at Metal Supermarkets told me. You can see here the finished indicator holder. The bend looks pretty crappy, and as you'll see when I do the machining, the rest of it looks really, really terrible, but it's actually quite functional, and I found out that my mill was out of tram by about 20 thousandths. Uh, that's because I've recently moved to a new house, and I'm setting up shop in my basement. I'm going to have twice the square footage that I had in my garage, plus heating and air conditioning. <laughs> but the lighting right now is terrible. I, I'm actually in the process of finishing the basement right now, so hopefully we don't have to suffer through too many videos with such poor lighting. I apologize for how crappy this uh, footage turned out. Anyway, I left about an inch and a half on both sides, uh, the side for the spindle and an inch and a half so I could machine the profile for the indicator holder. And then for the minor diameter, I turned down to about three eighths of an inch. I went with that diameter simply because it seemed like a good sturdy thickness, but then also I was confident that I'd be able to bend it in my really junky, just super ghetto brake attachment from my Harbor Freight 20 ton press. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. You'll also probably notice that there's a very slight taper to the minor diameter of this work. That's because my, my tail stock's out of alignment, and I was able to fix that a little bit later, but uh, it didn't really affect, well, it didn't affect the performance of this project at all, so it is what it is. I got a super terrible finish on this material like I always do at 1018, but I keep buying this stuff because it's so cheap, and then I just hate myself the entire time I use it. I don't recommend using 1018, <laughs> cold or hot rolled, and stay away from A36 or whatever that other crap is. It just sucks. Uh, anyway, since I got such a terrible finish and I didn't want it to look super bush league, I decided to sand the whole thing. I started with coarse uh, emery cloth and then went to fine and then finished with 400 grit wet dry. I know a lot of you are probably cringing right now saying you should never do this type of work on a lathe because you're going to, I don't know, get your entire arm sucked into the machine or die or something to those effect. Uh, I appreciate your concern. My safety is my own, and if you disagree with doing this, then by all means, don't do it. I'm not suggesting anybody else should do anything that I do, and just assume that uh, replicating any of my efforts will get you killed. Yes, I know I'm not wearing eye protection either. Everything I own is packed in totes uh, because I made this indicator holder so close to moving into my new house, and I know that's not an excuse because glasses only cost a couple of dollars. You know, I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm not safe. Just don't be like me, and you'll be fine. As far as the machining goes, you'll notice that I crashed the mill three times before figuring, figuring out what's wrong, and you're going to see it right here. Did you see that? The end mill stopped. Uh, the reason is, is I didn't have it tight enough in the collet, but like I said, I went ahead and crashed it two more times before figuring that out. The surface finish is really terrible, and I'm getting all kinds of really poor results. Mainly, I think it's because I'm just a bad machinist. I'm using a quarter inch depth of cut, and I started out with a quarter inch width of cut, and I eventually turned that down to eighth inch width of cut. I also tried WD-40, that didn't help, and it uh, didn't seem to matter what I did, I just kept getting bad results. Maybe it has to something to do with being new and unsupervised. Anyway, uh, you'll see here after I clean one of these sides off that there's actually a gouge kind of down the center of the part, it's deeper in the middle, even though it was not cut last. I'm assuming this happened specifically because my mill was way out of tram, because ever since I've trammed the mill, I've been getting really flat, mirror-like finishes. It's been fantastic. So that was a quarter-inch four-flute carbide. This is an eighth-inch four-flute carbide. I don't know the feeds and speeds of either of these off the top of my head, but I'll annotate them. One thing I want to explain uh, here is that the barrel of my indicator is three-eighths of an inch in diameter. So with a finish pass, I intended to land right at 3 eighths of an inch, and then I was going to install a tightening knob out on the end of the indicator holder so I could clamp down on the barrel of the indicator once installed. I ended up breaking my end mill before right, right at the beginning of the finish pass, and so it ended up being too small of a diameter hole for me to get my indicator uh, to go into. What I did was take a 3 eighths inch drill bit and drill down through the hole, and what I noticed was it actually spread these 
springy ears apart from each other. So what I got were two halves of a circle with the radius of 3 16 but the diameter of the hole being less than 3 8 The reason is, is because these two halves are closer together than they should be because the material sprung apart to allow for the drill bit. This actually worked out perfectly because it holds the indicator very, very tightly uh, and perfectly because, like I said, the radius of each side of the circle is 3 16 Anyway, I've actually done this uh, a couple of more times for some different applications, and it's worked just as well. And instead of using an inch and a half of material for this indicator holder section, I've got it down to about an inch. You'll notice my st red straw coming into view. This is out of my uh, Big Gulp. It was a Mountain Dew, and it was fantastic, but it was gone, and I needed some way to blow the chips out of the hole. These small mills are so short you can't get in there with a brush and being that my basement isn't finished and my house isn't wired for shop space I don't have an air compressor set up but the straw worked so I guess whatever you can do do it you can see here up close just how terrible this looks I gouged the material I set my depth wrong on one of the cuts it just looks like crap but functionally it's fantastic I've been completely happy so uh, I highly recommend making something like this for yourself if you're sick of using cheap dial indicator holders. As far as the bend, uh, I just laid this across the table and then with a file marked a notch right at the center of the y-axis. This was actually a mistake. I should have marked a quarter inch closer to the indicator. The reason is is when I put the bend in it, uh, I made the uh, <laughs> I made the small part of the bend exactly half of the table so the indicator tip is right on the far edges of the table when I sweep the y-axis. If I had uh, left myself a little bit more room it'd work a little bit better. It, it's not causing any problems but again I wish I had gone about a quarter inch closer to the indicator. Anyway there's the really crappy break and that's the last step. Thanks for watching guys.